Dear viewers, welcome back to another episode of Editorial Analysis by Drishti IAS. In this program, we primarily focus on important editorials from major newspapers such as The Hindu, The Indian Express, Live Mint, Business Standard, etc. for effective understanding of our students. Now, through this program, we focus on three things. First, we try to link the editorial or the article with that of the UPSC syllabus. Uh, secondly, we try to decode or decipher what are the key points that we have to focus in the article. And lastly and most importantly, we have to uh, learn the key concepts, if any, that are mentioned in the editorial. We truly hope that you love this initiative of Drishti IAS. Please, please feel free to give us your valuable suggestions so that we can strive to do better each and every day. So with a lot of gratitude in our hearts to our viewers, let us commence today's session of Editorial Analysis. Dear viewer, this video is available in Hindi as well. If you wish to watch it, please visit our Hindi YouTube channel, Drishti IAS. For your convenience, the link for this video in Hindi has been provided in the description below. For today, we have opted uh, for the comment article in the editorial section from the Hindu uh, titled Twisted Trajectory of BT Cotton dated 10th September 2020. Now, uh, what does the comment or the article talk about? Uh, it talks about how that uh, despite GM crops being promoted or specifically talking about BT cotton, yet it has not brought about the kind of benefits that we have uh, wanted. Now, the comment is written by Sujata Bhairavan, a scientist and an authority on uh, genetic engineering. Now, uh, let us try to link this article with that of the UPSC syllabus. Uh, from Plim's perspective, of course, we can connect it to environmental ecology, biodiversity, and also with general needs. And from Main's perspective, we can link it with General Studies 3, connecting it with technology, biodiversity, environment, and to further narrow it down. Of course, we can connect it with science and technology, developments and their applications and effects in everyday life, and also to biotechnology and issues relating to intellectual property rights. So now let us try to understand what is the key points that the author has mentioned in her article. Now uh, she talks about first and foremost the timeline and the importance of cotton in India. So uh, to begin with she stated that cotton has been woven and used in India for almost thousands of years. Now uh, the cotton fabric from around 3000 BC has been excavated from the ruins of Mohenjo-daro. Also the arc Archaeological findings in Mehrgad, Pakistan shows that cotton was used in the subcontinent as far back as 5000 BCE. And uh, the author further states that how the Indian cotton fabric dominated the world trade and we had exported it to many places including Greece, Rome, Persia, Egypt, Assyria and of course parts of Asia. And much of the cotton cultivated from then until the 20th century was of the indigenous Desi variety referred to as Gossipium arborea. Okay, now we move for the later timeline where uh, technology and development took place at a faster rate and we come to 1990s where the hybrid varieties of cotton was introduced and promoted. Now, uh, with the introduction of hybrid varieties, the Desi varieties started to give, get less priority than the hybrid varieties because the hybrid varieties tend to provide excellent yields. However, this came at one particular cost. They could not resist, you know, a variety of local pests. Okay, and this thereby contributed to using more fertilizers and pesticides. Now, uh, let us try to make this connection. Now, see, the hybrid varieties, they were assumed that they would give more yield, but in order to have more yield, the farmers had to use more fertilizers and pesticides. And just like, you know, any disease or any, uh, you know, a virus, uh, with more consumption, be it medicines, fertilizers or, or pesticides, you know, it tends to evolve. And that is exactly what happened with you know, pest. So the increasing use of synthetic pesticide, what was its actual role to control this pest later led, you know, to these, the same pest that we were targeting to evolve, mutate and become more resistant. And therefore it led to the emergence of resistant pests such as pink and American bollworm, which began increasing and 
this increase you know later led to more use of synthetic pesticides in order to control them okay so this became a big issue and uh, this led to rising deaths and uh, reducing yields also coupled with increasing insect resistance which worsened the plight of cotton farmers and led to increase in suicides now it was in this context that india introduced bt cotton in the year 2002 now uh, what is bt cotton or a genetically modified cotton see now the genetically modified cotton it was a plant which contained the pesticide gene from bacteria bacillus thuringiensis okay which is short form referred to as bt all right so it is a pesticide gene from the bacteria bacillus thuringiensis and now uh, that became successful and it has been grown in india for almost about 20 years now uh, the pesticide you know now produced in each bt plant cell why because the pesticide gene was taken from it and it was synced along or it was the genes was modified of the cotton and inserted all right so now the pesticide which now produced themselves produced in the bt plant cell protected the plant from bollworm thereby increasing yields and reducing insecticide that was required to spray on the cotton plant so with less insecticide the farmers didn't have to put much input and according to the ministry of agriculture from 2005 the adoption of bt cotton rose to 81 percent by the time it became 2007 and up to 93 percent in 2012 now from this statistic we might think you know it is a win-win situation for all of us but however the author says that recently a review was conducted for the last 20 years to see what was the actual yield so this review in the scientific journal nature plants analyzed the entire picture of the use of bt cotton in india so uh, uh, when you say india they literally started you know studying each and every state its use etc now there was a lot of facts related to the study however for our importance uh, we can say that the study concluded that there was not any major increase in yield of bt cotton crops and so uh, the question arises so what about the earlier study that said that they had adopted and there was an increasing yield so now this study has stated that see in the earlier reports of substantial growth uh, the the, st the studies then had a bias why because they did not you know account you know complementing improvements in other factors such as irrigation or excessive usage of fertilizers they or they you know assumed that the yield was only because of bt cotton crop no but there was also other factors see one it is bt cotton all right another factor if you say plus that is fertilizers also another factor is irrigation so all of this together definitely contributed to the yield that they were projecting you know initially because of bt cotton however so when the study decided to look at only the yield or benefit of bt cotton they found out that it has been modest and very short-lived and this is supported see because of the fact that see india's global rank for cotton production is 36 despite we claim about bt cotton or the heavy fertilizer use uh, irrigation chemicals etc and why is this bad because this is even lower than the national average of some poor African countries that do not have any BT cotton hybrids or good access to inputs. So what does the author say? Author says it's time we come back to our roots and we take up the desi varieties. You know why? Because they tend to resist many pests and do not present the problems that we face with hybrids or BT. So uh, one way to do this is one pure line cotton varieties where you know you find pure line through natural evolution. Also high density planting, short seasonal plants, etc. Cotton yields in India can be good as they stand a better chance at withstanding the vagaries of climate change. However, is this the only thing that we need to improve our yield with desi varieties? No, it is very important that government backup, you know, provide backup for resources, infrastructure and seeds, which is essential to scale up the desi varieties. So with this, we have concluded the key points that we had to learn from the article. Now we come to understand what are the key concepts. Now, most importantly, we have to focus on what are GM seeds. Now, uh, GM seeds, uh, before that, let me tell you how it is naturally happening. See, conventional plant breeding involves, you know, at the max cross species, you know, of uh, the same genus or genes to provide the offspring with the desired traits of both parents now a genus you know as a note just remember that it is a class of items such as a group of animals or plants with similar traits qualities or features that is you know two different plants or two different types you know of plants of crossbred or 
you know two dogs are crossbred to you know to create a different hybrid species or another version however you don't do a dog and a plant that is the whole idea however with genetic modification it aim to transcend this gene barrier all right how by introducing an alien gene in the seeds of the desired effects now alien gene means uh, from uh, some other third party source it will take that particular gene and insert it into the seed to get the desired effect now uh, for example cotton they uh, decided to take the gene from the bacterium bacillus thuringiensis all right and they clubbed it together so that why you don't have to use pesticide because there's already a gene of pesticide that is there in the cotton thereby making it resistant all right so the alien gene could be from a plant an animal or even a soil bacteria now uh, with reference to what is the legal position of gm crops in india see in india it is uh, a very controversial issue like uh, and because of that there was the genetic engineering appraisal committee which was set up by the government body under the environment protection act of 1986 it is the apex body that allows for commercial release of gm crops now in 2002 it was the genetic engineering appraisal committee that had allowed the commercial release of bt cotton and with that almost 95% of the country's cotton area has has since then come under bt cotton also uh, it is important to remember that any use of unapproved you know gm variant can attract a jail term of 5 years and a fine of rupees 1 lakh all right and it is stringent under the environment protection act of 1986 so what are the different types of gm crops uh, you know one that is allowed in india and two that is being tried or you know uh, they have plans to introduce now one is the bt cotton which we discussed about and this is the only one that is allowed in india and again it is the first genetically modified crop to be introduced in india so this bt cotton what it has alien genes from the soil bacterium bacillus thuringiensis that allows the crop to develop a protein toxic to the common pest pink bollworm also another variety is the herbicide tolerant bt cotton uh, on the other hand it is derived from the insertion of an additional gene that is which is different you know from the bacillus thuringiensis and it allows the plant to resist the common herbicide like glyphosate third variety is the dmh leaven mustard again uh, genetic modification of it allows cross pollination in a crop that self pollinates in nature now what are the certain pros and cons you know the pros are ten, uh, you know tentatively very less see now the usage of bh the uh, herbicide tolerant bt cotton helps the farmers to overcome the high cost of weeding as they can use glyphosate against weeds also a bin, brinjal growers in haryana which means you know uh, they root for bt brinjal because they claim that it reduces the cost of production by cutting down on the use of pesticides this was after a few trial runs were done but what are the cons to using genetically modified crops see first and foremost it is an absolute threat to biodiversity see uh, genetically modified crops it is hard to segregate it from uh, naturally the evolving hybrid or desi variety and definitely cross pollination can happen all right and when cross pollination of both these crops happen that is gm crops with a regular desi or a hybrid variety it could pave the way for creation of a herbicide resistant super weed So what happens when these super weeds are produced that is you know these super weeds can threaten the sustenance of other crops and pests because of their uncontrolled growth now also see one important factor is the characteristic of genetic modified crops is its resistance to pests all right now uh, there is no guarantee that a gm crop uh, can target only one type of pest maybe what if it targets more than different kinds of pests pests which are also important for uh, you know agriculture so it could eliminate an important species of pest that is responsible for sustaining domestic varieties and thereby affecting the food chain also another factor is nutrition issue A lot of research study says that BT brinjal, when it is being tested, it posts risk to human health as it is resistant to antibiotics, which in turn can make medicines ineffective when we have issues, and this may result in the formation of new toxins and allergens. Also, lastly, there is big implications for consumers and farmers. Again, which has been a very controversial event is that it is claimed that patent law gives developers of the GM crops a dangerous degree of control or dominance over the food supply. See now, com- companies such as Monsanto, or, you know, or etc., you know, need not necessarily give out the technology. They will have absolute monopoly over it, and it will be them who will be selling it out to the to the farmers. So, if they get monopoly, it can set us dangerous precedent, and this can 
control or dominance over the food supply could result in domination of world food production by a few companies. So with this, I hope we have understood what are the key concepts also that we had to learn from the editorial. Uh, and let us now like try to learn what is its significance from prelims and mains perspective. Of course, questions related to BT Brinjal, GAC and GM crops is very common. Uh, let us try to attempt one question. Uh, uh, what are the reasons for the people's resistance to the introduction of BT Brinjal? The first option is BT Brinjal has been created by inserting a gene from a soil fungus into its genome. Uh, another factor is that the seeds of BT Brinjal are terminator seeds and therefore the farmers have to buy the seeds before every season from the seed companies. Three, uh, there, are, there is an apprehension that the consumption of BT Brinjal may have adverse impact on health. And four, there is some concern that the introduction of BT Brinjal may have adverse effect on the biodiversity. See, now we know that the first point is wrong. Why? Because BT Brinjal has been created by inserting a gene not from a soil fungus, from a bacterium rather, serious thuringitis. All right. So first point is wrong. We can eliminate A and we can eliminate D. Now, seeds of BT Brinjal are terminator seeds and therefore, however, companies have stated that they are not terminator seeds and they need not be purchased every time, which can uh, reduce the investment cost of farmers. Therefore, our answer will be C. That is, it is an apprehension that the consumption of BT Brinjal may have an adverse impact on health. Why? It might make, you know, it lead to resistance. Okay, to antibiotics. Also, the introduction of BT Brinjal may have adverse effect on biodiversity. Absolutely, yes, as we discussed, you know, cross pollination, etc. Another question that is attempted is uh, the Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee is constituted under which of the following acts? The Food and Safety and Standards Act 2006, Geographical Indications of Goods Act 1999, the Environment Protection Act 1986, or the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. If you were listening to the editorial analysis thoroughly, you would be able to score two marks easily by understanding that it is under the Environment Protection Act of 1986. Now, from Maine's perspective, there weren't many questions. Henceforth, we would like you to attempt this question. That is, despite finding huge favor in India, the GM crop has only brought modest benefits. Discuss on the basis of the comment or article that you have understood now. So with this, we conclude uh, today's session of editorial analysis. Uh, dear viewers, uh, please feel free to uh, mention your answer in the comments below. Also, please do give us your valuable suggestions so that we can strive to do better each and every day. So. Until next time, stay safe, thank you and good night.